This tutorial will show you how to simulate brunel hardness test using COMSOL. A spherical indenter is used to leave an indentation on a sample, and the size of the indentation can be used to calculate the hardness of the material. We will need a 2D axisymmetric model, the solid mechanics interface, and a time-dependent study. So let's create the geometry. We will need to create the sample. I will change the units to millimeters. So specify the radius and the thickness. And we need the indenter ball. We will use a diameter of 10 millimeters, so the radius will be 5. And we will create it such that uh, one point on the ball will be touching the sample. So we can uh, create a, a half a circle only. That's what we need. All right, and finally, we need to change the form union into, uh, into a form assembly because the indenter and the sample will not be bonded. They will be two separate objects with two unique edges. So we need to have a form assembly here. So with that, the geometry is complete. Now we need to go under definitions and we need to uh, insert a contact pair. So go to pairs and select contact. This feature will basically uh, calculate the physical contact between two different objects. In this case, the sample and the indenter ball. So the source should be on the indenter and the destination edge will be the surface of the object being indented. All right, now we need to define the material. So we will choose aluminum for the sample. We will enter the material properties. And for the indenter, uh, in Brunel hardness test, uh, a common material that is used is tungsten carbide because it is very strong, it has a very high modulus of elasticity and a very high um, uh, strength. It is a very hard material. So we can insert this material from the console library if you type WC, which stands for tungsten carbide. This is the chemical name and insert WC solid. The properties of the tungsten carbide are already defined in console. Okay, now we need to go under uh, physics and we need to define a contact pair. We have defined a contact pair in the definition, but we need to use it in the physics. So uh, under the physics tab, go to pairs and insert contact. at the contact pair which we have defined and change the formulation to augmented Lagrangian. The solution method should be selected as fully coupled. And uh, there is also one setting that we need to change under contact pair. For the search method, change fast into direct. So direct is more robust, but it will it is computationally more expensive, but it will give us the accuracy that we need. Let's go back to physics and we need to insert a fixed constraint. So the bottom of the sample cannot move. And we need to insert a force. So insert a boundary load choose the upper uh, edge of the circle. So the force will be applied on top of the uh, indenter ball. And we will specify the total force. It will be, uh, two let's select 2000 Newtons in the negative direction. We will be increasing the load gradually into a maximum and then removing it. And when the load is completely removed, uh, there will be some plastic deformation on the sample, 
and we will use the size of the created indentation to calculate the hardness number. So under the global definitions, we need to create a triangular function. The lower limit is zero, the upper limit is one. So from zero to one seconds and turn off the smoothing. So this will be the shape of the function. We will multiply the total applied force with this function. The input unit is time, and since the function does not take any units, we need to normalize the unit, so 1 over seconds. Okay, and finally, we need to insert a linear elastic node for the sample, and we will select a plasticity model, because as the, uh, as the sample gets deformed, uh, some, some of the deformation will be plastic. You can check out my other video. You can find the link in the description if you want to uh, check out more details about how to define the plasticity model. I will choose the FOSS model. Again, you can check it in my other video. Okay, so the plasticity model is now defined for the sample and the indenter is molded as an elastic material. We are confident that the indenter will never plastically deform because we chose a very hard material, which is tungsten carbide. Now we, we need to go to mesh and select a user controlled mesh. We will use triangular elements for both domains, but we need to make the mesh extremely fine near the uh, contact edges. So insert a sizing node and select the boundary of uh, the boundary of the indenter. We will choose the size as 0 0.2 millimeters. And for the uh, the contact edge on the sample, you need to make sure that the element size is half as large. So since we chose 0 0.2 millimeters for the indenter, we will choose 0 0.1 millimeters for the sample edge. Okay, so this looks fine. Uh, you can make the mesh finer if you want to. The, uh, the simulation time will increase, but uh, I think this is enough for uh, to get an accurate result. Finally, insert the default time-dependent solver. Under time dependent solver, go to time stepping and make sure that BDF is selected. The direct solver is enabled and make sure that the nonlinear solver is set to automatic Newton. And we can save the time from 0 to 1 seconds in steps of 0 0.01 seconds. This simulation, although it is in 2D, it is uh, computationally expensive and it will take about three to four minutes to solve. So I have another model which is ready with the uh, results. So you can insert a 2D plot and you can see the deformation of the uh, sample. The maximum deformation of course happens at 0 0.5 seconds, I will show you. That's when the applied load is, a is at a maximum. And then when we go to one second, when the load is completely removed, you can see that the sample uh, surface uh, rebounds slightly, but not completely. There is some plastic deformation. And the size of the indentation is given by the diameter of the indentation. So the diameter of the indentation in this case is about two millimeters. You can see that the radius is close to one millimeters. 
So the total uh, diameter is close to 2 to 2.1 millimeters. That's the diameter of the indentation. The diameter of the indenting ball is 10 millimeters. So we can use that information to calculate the Brunel hardness number. So the formula for the Brunel hardness number, I've typed it here. You can see it is 2F. F is the total applied force divided by the gravitational acceleration, uh, acceleration constant, divided by pi. Uh, capital D is uh, 10 millimeters in this case, the diameter of the indenting ball. And the average indentation diameter in this case is 2 millimeters. So we can insert the formula here, and we can change time selection to last and click on evaluate. So it turns out that the hard, Brunel hardness number for aluminum is 64. If you want to know what that means, you can go online and check out the uh, Brunel hardness table, and you can see uh, several properties that correspond to this number. For example, you can use this number to estimate how strong aluminum is. You can get an idea of how uh, high the tensile strength is and uh, some other properties. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please subscribe and give it a like.